Please give a warm welcome to a woman who's built a career both in front and behind the camera, Mimi Lesios. Hi, I'm so happy to be here. There was a very tall, sharp, shiny needle, and it was planted on the ground and went all the way up to the sky into the darkness and I was standing on top of it. I was alone and afraid, and I was scared to cry. I was even scared to take a deep breath because if I did, I would fall. And that was a real recurring dream that I had from about the age of five. My mother's Greek, my mother's Mexican, my father's Greek, and I'm the baby of five. I'm born and raised near Hollywood in an area called Silver Lake, Silver Lake, yay! <laughs> I was about five or six when my mom <clears throat> and dad got divorced and dad left us. My whole world just seemed to come to an absolute stop and it absolutely changed. My mom started going out every single night and I couldn't sleep when my mom wasn't home. So I sat by the window and looked up towards Sunset Boulevard waiting for the RTD bus to drop her off. And I was just hoping that every single person that came off that bus was my mom. But eventually, she got off the bus stumbling. Her hair was all messed up. Her makeup was messed up. She smelt like booze. And her dress was hiked up all the way so you could see her panties. Now I would go and get her, put her inside the house, and I would put her to bed. And then I would feel safe. To make matters worse, my mom married our 18-year-old gardener from Mexico. His name was Angel. And whenever Angel wasn't home, somehow we needed repairs in our house. And the repairman would come, and Angel wasn't home, and the repairs were done mainly in my mom's bedroom, if you know what I mean. And then Angel would come home and catch her in the act and beat the holy shit out of her. And I would watch this, and this would happen often. And then there were these parties at my house where a lot of guys and girls would be there, and they had bandanas and baggy pants and Pendletons, a lot of tattoos. And there were these girls who had a lot of makeup and big high hair, and they'd be slow dancing and smoking something called PCP. And <clears throat> there was this guy really mean, dark eyes. He had tattoos, and that was my sister's boyfriend. He lived with us. Not only was it his, her, my sister's boyfriend, but he was the leader of 18th Street, which is the largest, most violent Mexican gang in LA. And I was sitting on the stairs watching, right through the railing, and I saw my sister's boyfriend get this knife and put it on this guy's neck. And I saw in his eyes, there was absolutely no fear. No fear to kill and no fear to be killed. And just then my mom came running in and she had a bloody face and she was crying and she told everybody what had happened and I ran upstairs because I was supposed to be in my bedroom, always supposed to be in my bedroom. There was no bathroom and no TV. And I was so scared and I was just curled up in my bed and I can hear my mom telling everybody what had happened, that it was the 18 year old gardener angel who had beat her. And then I heard somebody come inside the house, and my mom was screaming, no, no. And then somebody ran upstairs, and I was shaking. I was so scared. And then my door flew open, and it was the gardener. And we locked eyes. He didn't say anything. But I can hear that people were chasing after him up the stairs, saying that they were going to kill him. And I'd never seen fright in somebody's eyes like that ever. And so he crashed right through the closed window, and glass flew everywhere. And he was on top of the roof, and he, he just drum, jumped right off the roof. And of course, the gang members were there to get, get him. And oh my god, they beat the holy hell out of him. I could hear him yelling. And then I heard the sirens. And the police came, and the ambulance took him away. And that was my life as a child. I felt so alone and afraid, and I just wanted to disappear. And I was always told, go upstairs. But there was no bathroom upstairs. I had to pee. Do you know, I could hold P 
pee for hours. And there was something that I loved so much, and it wasn't upstairs. That was television. I knew my life wasn't normal or something I liked at all. <clears throat> I knew that I saw something in that magic box, something I wanted, something I liked, and I wanted desperately. I saw on television Aunt B so kind and so nice with loving words in Andy and Mayberry. I saw in Partridge Family and My Three Sons and the Brady Bunch that people actually sat down to dinner together and talked about their day. I wanted that. And the thing I loved most was when I saw parents reading to their children and tucking them in at night. I learned from television that there was a different way of life for me. So by 16 years old, I was bitter, and I was angry, and I felt unwanted. And I absolutely was ashamed. And I absolutely felt like second class. And I knew I had to do something. I knew I couldn't do something about my past or where I came from, but I could certainly do something about my future. So I knew I had to get a job and get an apartment and get the hell out of there. So I did. I went to work at the Hollywood Tropicana as a mud wrestler. <laughs> it was this club in Hollywood. It was like a nightclub where there were a couple of bars and a DJ booth and a mud pit right in the center. And I would wear a costume and dance around all these horny men holding up tips and I would take off my costume down to my bikini. And then I would wrestle another girl in the mud. And sometimes we even had to wrestle the highest bidder of the audience. Not only was I getting a good workout, but I was learning to work a crowd and to get my sexy on. It's true. <clears throat> and, you know, there's one good thing about my upbringing. It was no fear. I felt that I had taken on a part of that and it totally rubbed off on me. And by this time, I knew I liked fighting and I was really good at it and I wanted to use it for the good. So with that money that I earned, I went and uh, hired some trainers and I studied with the top martial artists, boxers and, and wrestlers. And of course, that brought my fighting to the next level and I fought to the championships in many different leagues. And then that gave me the chance to be on television, on ESPN and Prime Ticket, and that was my magic box opportunity. I was so happy, I couldn't believe it. Television had claimed me. I'm an actress, I'm a stunt woman, I'm a writer and a producer. And one day this uh, producer from Paramount Pictures asked me if I wanted to star and do my own stunts in this movie called American Angels. I said, hell yeah, shoot. And from that point, I went on to act and do my own stunts in a whole bunch of different television shows and films. And then I became a specialty stunt woman. And that was awesome. It brought me to be in a whole bunch of different shows like Malcolm in the Middle, uh, workaholics, Fear the Walking Dead, Rosewood, Million Dollar Baby, Scorpion King, Gangs of New York, the list goes on. I was on a roll, I was on fire until something unexpected happened. I got pregnant and the guy left me at four and a half months pregnant and I drove myself to the hospital by myself and when I came back, I wasn't alone anymore. There were three of us. I had twins, a boy and a girl. And now, now was finally, oh my God, finally my opportunity to take everything I learned from, from television, the love, the caring, the sharing, the, the reading to them at night, tucking them in, having dinner and talking about our day. Now was my opportunity to give back to my own children. And that is exactly what I did, and I loved every minute of it. 
You know, television raised me to be the person that I am, the values that I have. And I raised my children all by myself. So I consider television to be my children's grandparent. <laughs> and you know little Mimi? All alone and so afraid to even take a deep breath on that tall needle. Now at night, I can take deep breaths because I can. And little Mimi never fell off that needle. I leaped off. Thank you for listening.